Hello and welcome to the 11th machine learning pattern recognition for use with algorithmic automatic trading and with stocks and forex. So where we left off, uh, we were just basically looking at the most recent pattern in our data and looking at all the p previous patterns in the data and showing the similarity and predicting the outcome. Now what we need to do, now that we've done this, right, are, are clearly at least visually looking at our pattern recognition. It, it works pretty well. I mean, it's not the best, but it works. So we know the pattern recognition works, so we're done. Now we want to know, and at least begin to figure out, does this even matter, <laughs> right? So we've done pattern recognition, now we need to go back in time and act as if we were running this in reality. So the way that we're going to do this and, and, and really recognize new variable, or new patterns and then see if that actually works. So what we need to do is we can leave this stuff up here, but first let's cut and cut this out because this will be the reason why we want to cut this is this is going to change as time goes on um, and I'll, I'll explain as we go so so we cut this and let's just go all the way to the bottom of the script generally when you write programs all, all the functions get defined at the top any global variables get defined at the top and then the actual like loop so to speak the main loop is all done at the bottom so let's come down here and let's paste that stuff that we just made now, the next thing we need to do is basically we want to run through this data as if it was new data, so we don't want to load all of the data at the same time. So each time we want to add one plot to the data and then run through and be like, okay, do we know any similar patterns to this current most recent quote unquote pattern and go from there. So the way that we're going to do this is with a while loop. And then a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, we need to, let's define data length. So data length will be, and the reason why this is, is we need to know where should the while loop stop. So the way that we can do this is with bid. So don't forget, bid is just part of this NumPy array that's defined up here. So bid, so how long is that bid array? But it, you can't just do length bid array because you can't do length of a NumPy array. So but the way that you can get sort of the length is you can do bid.shape and then the 0th element in that array. And that's going to return a number that's going to be kind of a finicky, funky number. It'll be a number and an L for, I believe, what stands for length. But let's just convert that to an integer. Done. So now we have data length. We'll actually print now data length is comma data length. Now the next thing we want to do is, where do we want to start, right? There's no, well first of all, if you started at point number one, there would be no previous data and no way to make a pattern on that data. So since we start at 30, really we must start at 30, but we're probably not going to find it, well we won't find any similar <laughs> patterns because we won't have anything to consider. So to what, uh, we'll say is where, you know, like from the beginning to what point are we going to consider, basically is what to what means. So let's just say we're going to at least to what is the 100th point. Now what we need to do is we'll make a while loop here. So while to what is less than data length, what do we want to do? We want to do this, basically run the program. So we'll tab that over. And if you don't know, you can just highlight everything and literally hit tab. Now that average line is considering the entire array. That's cheating. So really what we need to do is now we'll just cut this and we'll just say average line equals average line colon to what? So this will only consider the data that we're allowing it to consider. Now what it's going to do is it'll make the arrays of all the patterns. It'll make all of the performance stuff and it's going to make the pattern for recognition. Obviously it makes them empty right now, but then it starts storing the patterns. And each time we add one data point, it clears the patterns and redoes them. Now, efficiency-wise, bad idea. That's going to be very hard on our processing, especially as data length gets longer. You can work around that. That can be fixed very easily, but for the simplicity, and also I don't mean to spoon-feed everybody this epic machine learning application either. I'm just trying to teach you guys machine learning, but just I'm pointing that out as well, that that is going to be a problem area as you start to expand and learn more patterns, but it doesn't have to be a problem area. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, 
once we do this, it's going to basically um, just run this while loop. Well, first of all, this would run inf infinitely. So we also want to do two what plus equals one. And if it finds any um, similarities, right? We have how sim greater than forty. If it does, if anything is found, it will plot it up. Now the next thing I want to do is just to make this application stoppable, otherwise it will never stop and it will just continue running through. We're going to just say move on, we're going to create this variable called move on, and it's just going to be a raw input and just kind of like a pseudo input here. And we're just going to say press enter to continue, and literally if you press enter it will continue now. So save that, and let's run this and see how we're doing. So we should, it should uh, save everything, store it, Obviously, it's found no pattern, so you can hit enter to continue. It's found no pattern. Let me just drag this up here. Hit enter to continue. Found no pattern. It's probably not going to find any patterns yet. So just literally hit enter and hold enter until we find a pattern. It might take a little bit uh, to find its first pattern. So we'll just, oh, there we go. We got a pattern. So here we go. Found a pattern similar. Plots it up for us. Cool. Close out of this. Um, hit enter again, wait till we find another pattern, found another pattern, this one was really goofy, but found it nonetheless, and another pattern, and, and sometimes, like as you, especially as you get deeper, obviously a very similar pattern plus one point is going to be fairly similar, right? So once you find a similar one, chances are you're going to find, oops, I made it huge, uh, find a bunch of them. So anyway, I'm going to close out of this, um, oh, and as you can see, it actually found quite a few similar patterns, uh, please go away. <laughs> anyway, um, so now we're back to press any key to continue. Now, that brings up a point, is it brought up a bunch of similar patterns for that exact one pattern. So why we plot them on a different chart makes kind of no sense, right? So uh, in the next video, what I'm going to show you guys is how to plot them all up on the exact same graph so we can view it all, all the same charts basically visually. That way, as we build this back testing, we can see visually how it is. And then we can take it one step further and plot that. Don't forget, we have a predicted outcome of percent change. So we can plot that percent change. And as you can see, um, like here, for example, let me try and find the last press enter to continue. We had quite a few. Anyway, whatever. Um, OK, I found it. <laughs> predicted outcome for that pattern, positive, 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 positive. You get the point, positive. Wow. So with this pattern that we found, the predicted outcome is positive. And what we can do is, pr is, is literally plot those predicted outcomes as well. And then the next step is to actually, since we, we do know what the future outcome was, both on those patterns and also in reality, we can say... We can plot that, and then we can find out. We can go to the next bit of data, and that really the next range of data, and we can find out were we wrong or were we right. So that's what we're going to con continue working towards and getting closer and closer to finding out whether or not this is even of any use at all. <laughs> but no matter what, you've actually learned pattern recognition. So that's pretty cool. So anyway, um, as we... Uh, as we continue, we'll be able to find out uh, how useful this is, and then also uh, we're going to start getting pretty deep into some questions of variables. So um, anyway, stuff to look forward to. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support and subscriptions, and until next time.